Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to the SEA Specimen Paper Series here on Sea Results Academy. Um, I was notified yesterday by one of our viewers, uh, whose name is Crystal, that we left out number 24. All right, so yesterday we did numbers 25 and 26, and before that we did all the questions um, throughout the various videos up until number 23, but I overlooked number 24. I do apologize, so we're going to start with number 24 today before moving on to number 27. So number 24 reads, which two square numbers sum to 100? Okay, so two square numbers here must be summed to make 100. Therefore, we're going to include all of the square numbers that come before 100 and see which of them or which two of them would sum to 100. So the square numbers, if we use our counting numbers and multiply them by themselves, so example, one by one or one squared, 2 by 2 or 2 squared and so on, we'll get our um, list of square numbers, right? So we'll start with 1 squared, which is 1. Then we have 2 squared or 2 by 2, which is 4. 3 squared or 3 by 3, which is 9. 4 squared, which is 16. 5 squared, which is 25. 6 squared, which is 36. 7 squared, which is 49. 8 squared, which is 64, and 9 squared, which is 81. Now, 10 squared is 100, so we can't, we don't have a 0 here as being a square number, right? 0 is not a square number. So, uh, we won't include 100 since two numbers need to be added together to get 100, all right? So, by observing these and sort of testing them out, uh, you would realize that the two numbers that sum together to make 100 are 36 and 64. So we're now on number 27. Andrew was asked to solve the problem below. 5,021 subtract 3,986. He estimated a difference of 2,000 in working on the problem. Explain why Andrew's estimate may not be reasonable and clearly show your estimate. Okay, so Andrew estimated here a difference of 2,000. So it would appear that Andrew looked only at the digits occupying the thousands place and subtracted 3 from 5 and he got 2. So he estimated 2,000. But that is not reasonable and will demonstrate why. So 5,021, if we look at the hundreds here, the hundreds column, we see or we notice that it's a zero. Okay, so it's going to have no impact on the five in the thousands column. So therefore, 5,021 rounded to the nearest thousand is 5,000. And then we're going to round 3,986 to the nearest thousand. So if, we, if, again, we look at the hundreds column, we'll notice that there's a 9 occupying here. So 9 is 5 or greater, right? 9 is greater than 5. So therefore, what we'll have to do is to add 1 to the thousand. So the 3,000 will now become 4,000, and we replace the remaining digits with zeros. Okay, so if we were to now subtract these from each other, we would get 5,000, take away 4,000. So a better estimate would be 1,000. A better estimate for this difference would be 1,000. Okay, so in writing your explanation of why Andrew's estimate may not be reasonable, remember to include the fact that he only looked at the thousands digits, the digits occupying the thousands place when making his estimate. However, that was uh, not a wise strategy since if he is going to be making an estimate based on thousands, he would definitely have to look at the hundreds and both of these numerals to determine whether to round them up or round them down. Okay, so that is what you would put. And of course, the, uh, our estimate would be 1,000. And in our final question for today, uh, number 28, Marlon sells a set of three mangoes for $5. He wants to buy a television which costs $3,725, but only has $775 in his savings. How many mangoes must he sell to earn the rest of the money he needs? 
So first of all, we're going to determine how much money uh, Marla needs to save in order to buy that um, television, right? So he already has $775 and he has a goal of $3,725. So all we need to do, therefore, is to subtract uh, what he has from what he requires, right? He requires $3,725 and he has $775 in his savings. So if we subtract those from each other, we will get a difference of $2,925. $50. Okay, so therefore Marla needs to save $2,950. So how many mangoes would he have to sell in order to earn that type of money? Now, he sells three mangoes for $5. So $2,950 is nicely divisible by five. So if we were to divide that number by five, then that would give us the amount of sales that he will have to make in mangoes, and then we can actually translate that into the number of mangoes itself. And this is going to give us five hundred and ninety sets of mangoes, right? Five hundred and ninety sets of mangoes because he sells three mangoes. In a set for five dollars. So now, if we the question asks how many mangoes must he sell, so we have to break this down now into the number of mangoes. So therefore, five hundred and ninety sets multiplied by three because there are three mangoes in a set, and that is going to give us one thousand seven hundred and seventy. So he has to sell one thousand seven hundred and 70 mangoes. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in, and we do look forward to having you again tomorrow as we continue our journey into this SEA specimen paper and beyond. And I also would like to ask you to like this video, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to click the notification bell, to like our Facebook page, and to follow us on Instagram. You can look for our Series Arts Academy and uh, do support our initiative, all right? So have a fantastic evening, everyone, and see you all tomorrow, God willing.